All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for stopping by. <clears throat> my name again is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry. And, you know, for the next 90 days or maybe 180 days, whatever I'm feeling, I'm going to be creating content based on the journey of the African-American from the beginning of slavery in 1619, the first the time the first at Blacks stepped foot on American soil until 2021. And I'm gonna be doing a variety of different perspectives about it too. So I happen to find this uh, information as I'm doing research about um, not only um, how the Blacks experience certain things, but also uh, this particular uh, segment talks about how the, the experience was happened through the slave owner's perspective, why they would do something like treat the slave the way they treated them, keep them in bondage and all that. Now, this is uh, from a site called Slavery and the Making of America. So this is going to be an overview uh, of a, it's called historical fiction. So I'm just going to read it to you and you tell me what you think about it. And, uh, you know, then you at least have a different perspective on how to view things or how you view things in line with this particular topic, right? I, see, I think that kind of stuff is really interesting if you're interested in that type of stuff. So I'm going to begin should take me about three minutes, maybe five minutes or something. So here we go. <clears throat> it says, slave owners, when people study slaves in the United States, they often wonder how could slave owners justify their choices to hold other humans in bondage? What could make them do such a horrible thing? These questions are important and answers are complex. Slave owners use many reasons to make their choices seem acceptable to society at large and to themselves. And looking for answers, we might simply say that slave owners were bad people, too cruel to think that slavery was wrong. There, were, there is historical support for this explanation, considering the many stories of slave masters' abuse and torture of slaves. At the same time, there have been many examples of extreme cruelty in history that do not involve slaves and masters or even people of different ancestry. Cruelty alone does not seem to explain the unique experience of slaves in the United States. Another explanation for slavery is racism. This builds on the bad people explanation by being more specific about the badness of slave owners. They were not just cruel, but practiced their cruelty on people of African ancestry. There is a, there is a lot of historical support for this explanation, but there are many stories that complicate such an explanation. For example, we know that there are many African-Americans who enslaved other African-Americans, most commonly in Louisiana. There are also examples of Native Americans holding African-American slaves. So racism alone cannot explain slavery's existence. Yet another explanation for slavery is greed. In this case, we might say that slave owners were driven mostly by the desire for wealth and power. This too seems to make sense. Historians know that the profits from slavery were large, often as large as the profits made by factories in the North. Furthermore, slave owners held almost every position of political power in the South, as well as important jobs in the federal government. For example, other than John Adams um, and John Quincy Adams, every president in the first 45 years of our nation's existence was a slaveholder. 
to help understand how slave owners justify holding other humans in bondage, we have the chance to read a series of letters between two fictional slave owners. What follows is an imaginary exchange of letters between a plantation owner and a small scale slave owner. The letters show slave owners justifying their actions. And every quotation within each fictional letter is drawn from the actual writing of the actual person who lived in the early 19th century. For example, one letter refers to John C. Calhoun, who was a United States Senator from 1832 to 1843 and from 1845 to 1850. Now I'm gonna stop there, but there is more that you can read if you wanna go and you know continue that. But I wanted you to hear some of the things that I was reading that, you know, interest me. Those type of things, those names of people, I didn't know those people. Maybe John Adams and John Quincy, I know those, you know, people. Those were presidents. But other than that, it was just interesting to me and I wanted to share it with you guys. But I like I say, I didn't want to take too long on this video because, you know, we all have a short attention span, right? But I just want to give you a perspective on that. Hope you enjoy that. Again, I'm going to see you on the next video. Have a great day.